anyways um so one of my subscribers gave a shout out to write a video about explaining uh what's inside basically all these um uh components i have here so basically yeah i'm gonna do that basically oh like what what's inside all the integrated circuits and stuff um yeah <laughs> i'm sorry i'm being vague here so anyway There we go. Yeah, just a false wire. Anyway, so, as promised, I'll commence into this thing. So basically, what these things are here is they're just decoders. So what they do is they take a three-bit binary output and output all of the combinations, possible combinations that are possible with all these bits. There are eight of them because, yeah, because there are basically it's 2 to the nth bit so 2 to the third is 8 possible combinations and if I open up the schematic for this thing then basically it's just a giant sort of like selector circuit so basically the 0 is on because so basically you have to like calculate what is on but you have to cal also calculate what is off. So, base for instance, this zero is on, and it will, is hardwired to be on, but it's only on. Really, this was broken. I could have just like, like put this in there. Don't, <laughs> please, just don't. Like, I know, I was a bit of an idiot here, but this is just extra redundancy anyway. So. But it the zero is only on if none of the input inputs are on. So if I put an input on, then the zero will be off because of this not gate right here. It has ha, ha, this not gate has to be on for this light to be off for this light to be on. And then you just basically say what's on and what's off for each and every single output. So basically, for instance, like if the one's on and all and these two are off, then the one will be on. But if this one's on and and the one is still on, then sure the one's on, but then this one is also on. So it so you have to have a AND gate for every possible output except for the last one because it's just it ha all three of them have to be on but there's no possible way for like it's sort of like the zero here there's sort of like it's just on by default except if you, if any of these other turns on these there's no possible off output except because all of them just have to be on so yeah I hope you understood some of that yeah, in terms of the logic gates that are in there, basically you just have to tell yourself, okay, what has to be on, what has to be off. So basically what has to be on, you have to put it through an AND gate, and what has to be off, you have to put through an OR gate, and an OR inverter, and then you compare. And so basically if the stuff that's on is on, and the stuff that's off is off, then the light lights up. Okay, so now for the registers. Okay, so here it is a schematic of one of my registers. Now, I took way too long in the first try of this explaining SR nor SR nor latches. So I'll just be very quick about this. Uh, so basically, if set is on, then Q will be on. If reset is on, then Q will be off. This is a right enable. So basically, it's just an AND gate connected to the input telling this um, uh, circuit to... So basically, it will only load data if it pulses. 
you see before they were red because they were not connected because uh, it always starts out that way but once I pulsed this then they turn white which signifies off right and so basically how you would build one of these is those are special because those are master slave with a right enable on them so but basically master slave just basically being two mechanisms attached to one another yeah so if you just did that Oops, those are NAND gates, that's bad. Yes, AND gates. So, anyway. So yeah, this will be a simple SR normal latch, not a master slave one, but it would just have a write enable, not a read enable. Um, so basically, um, so if I turn this on, unlike the master slave, you don't have to pulse it. If it's just on, then it will write. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. There we go. It'll write. Yeah, in the real world, there's no red wires. It's just on and off, so that's pretty good, except for, like, weird states. Yeah, um, so basically, what this does is it... So basically, if this input is on, then this AND gate will be on, turning this NOR gate off, and so this NOR gate will be on because this NOR gate is off unless I turn both of them on, but so it will be zero. But we're not turning both of them on, we're just turning one of them on. So this NOR gate is on, this NOR gate is off. And as you see, the input of one GORN gate is tied into the output of the other. Or really, I should have said the reverse way. The output is tied into the input, because the output is feeding into the input. So if I turn this off, if I turn the right enable off, so you can see there's no current coming in here, but this NOR gate is still on. And this NOR and this NOR gate is off because if this one's on, this one was turned on first. So now it's outputting into this NOR gate to turn it off. So it's a latch until it's reset. That's what SR stands for, by the way, set reset. So if I switch the Wii switch, switch the reset switch, then it will, um, then the reverse will happen, basically. Then I guess this is not Q, so basically it will be a zero. So if I set it, then it's one. If I reset it, then it's zero. Not Q output, it's just sort of redundancy. You don't really need the not Q output, so really, it would just be set, reset. You might have a special purpose for the not Q output, which is why they put it. Unless you turn both of them on, so not Q and Q will be off. Yeah. You could do this with NAND gate latches, so that would be a NAND gate, that would be a NAND gate, that would be a NAND gate. And that would be an AND gate. That would be called a D latch instead of an SR latch. Really, they're both data latches, but uh, this one's called an SR latch. This one's called a D latch. This was, I guess, the original. So basically, same concept. One's tied into the other and stuff. And it behaves similarly to the SR NOR latch. Uh, except for the fact that so here let's let me think about this a little bit so do, do, 
So these are NAND gates. So they're only off if both the inputs are on. So if this NAND gate, so if if all of these are off, then this NAND gate will be on, and this NAND gate will be on. Actually, yeah, if they they will both the both NAND gates will be on, but one of the NAND gates will be feeding into the other NAND gate and then this one and then the, the one of the NAND gates will be off but then so it can't feed into the other one so this one will be on so yeah it would work the same way except it has a special state when both inputs are on so let's just do this real quick discussing different types of latches I'm probably taking too long again uh, just wait until I get to half adders. It'll take a century. So if I turn this on, and I turn one of them on, then it, then it behaves as expected. If I turn the other one on, then it also behaves as ex expected. So basically the NAND gates have to turn off in order for one of them to be on. Although, if I turn all of the switches on, then they are both on instead of the SR nor latch, uh, the, instead of the SR nor latch, where they're both would be off. So, special states. So, in essence, none of the, either one, one of these has to be on, they can't be shut off, ever. Oh, whereas the next one long latch, they can. So, yeah, anyway, back to the um, register. So, basically, what I'm doing here is I'm just inverting reset. So, if so, instead of set and reset, there's just one data wire. So, and it toggles set and reset. So I'm not using the special state where both are on or both are off. Well, really, there's an AND gate in here, so both of them are off until I turn on this and toggle it, actually. Because um, these are master-slave flip-flops, so you have to toggle them instead of... I mean, I can explain master-slave flip-flops in another lesson sort of thingy but uh not right now so yeah so basically these are just a bunch of set as our nor latches and so what this switch is this switch is just right enable what this switch is is it's read enable because uh my processor calls from write and read enable so you can only read the data if you turn on the read enable switch and as you see there's a one so that's the registers so then we go to the ALU, which is conveniently up here. So basically in my ALU, I have four functions that the ALU can accomplish. The first is AND, uh, and the second is OR, the third is NOR, and the fourth is ADD. So basically, the way this works is that um, basically I have the desired logical operation on one gate. This is a NOR operation, but I'm just inverting the output from the OR, nor, or gate to make a NOR gate. But the thing is, and I'm also at feeding them through another uh, regular AND gate because this is basically how you call a function you have one of these wires on do not have both of them on at the same time like if you do like all this then nothing will happen really of substance it, it'll just be like i mean yeah because if you have an or and an or uh on at the same time and everything will be on so don't do that. That 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 is bad. That is. Bad. <laughs>
Oh. All right. Okay. So. Uh, sorry about that. Anyway. So yes. Um. So basically, yeah, it's just desired logical operation and add and a bunch of AND gate buffers. This is a carry output from the adder. So now let's look at the adder because all of the other ones are just rudimentary. But the real special thing here is the adder, which is actually not that special. Um, so yeah, basically this is my 4-bit adder. Ooh, wow. So basically, uh, if you turn... Uh, so basically, this is the ones place, this is the twos place, this is the fours place, and this is the eight place. In binary, this would just be yeah ones, twos, threes, fours. But in binary, if you're converting it to decimal, then this would actually be a one. This would be a twos place. This would be a fours place, and this would be an eights place. And then the next one would be a sixteens place, and then you just keep on multiplying by two. Basically. Apart from the first bit, starting with the second bit, basically it's 2 to the n minus 1, in other words. Yeah, yeah, that's, that would actually apply for all the bits. 2 to the n, to the quantity of n minus 1. Because if we all know that if you raise something to a zeroth power, then it will just be 1. So it does work for all the scenarios. Yes, I just made a formula. I'm so proud of myself. Ooh. Uh, so, yeah. So, basically, um, so, this is, this, so, basically, the adding mechanisms. These work, basically, it, they're just very simple. So, like, so, basically, if one's on, then it will feed for this OR gate and not this AND gate. Um, so, basically, Imagine this whole thing as an XOR gate. So what XOR gate is, so if one's on, it's okay. If another one's on, it's okay. If they're both off, that's not okay. And if they're both on, then it's not okay. So that, so it's an exclusive OR gate. Excluding one value while the other one's on. So, yeah. So if you turn one on, then the one's place will light up. If you turn the other one on, then the one's place will still light up. But if you turn both on, then the output will carry. Yes, because this is not a one anymore. This quantity is not a one. This is now a two, because one plus one is two just like 5 plus 3 or no 5 plus 5 <laughs> in decimal you can't represent that in the the ones place because that the ones place goes from 1 to 9 in decimal so you have to move it over to the tens place are you getting what I'm saying Good. and so basically how you would at yeah so how would you so how you would compute binary numbers, so like for instance if I have this, then it's basically the ones place plus the fours place. So it's basically just one plus four. Or two plus four. You are adding them. Yeah. At least that's how I do it. Anyway, so now and basically what these things are is their full adders. So they won't add two bits, but they'll add three bits. So it's possible for something to happen like this. So if A and B and the carry are on, then this bit will be on, but this bit will also be on. So yeah, I'm assuming you understand everything about like the the half adder, so now let's get into the full adder. Full adder. So yes, this is Marvel's full adder. Wow. It's really impressive, isn't it? I can feel you all like jumping. Anyway, so basically what this full adder does. So basically, this is an XOR gate, what I was talking about in the previous um, 
uh, uh, thing, like, hey, I wish I had a port Xor gate here um, with my half adder, because that would have been actually a lot easier. Well, it would have been a lot less, like, uh, massive, I guess, I don't know. Um, so basically, yeah, these are Xor gates. So, like I was saying before, if one's on its grave, another one's on its grave, but if both are on, then it's not okay. So, yeah, Xor gate. So, this is A, and this is B, and this is carry. So, it, you're exhoring A and B. So, if A is on, then you're flipping your one bit switch. Then, this bit is going to be on, because... What in the full adder, this is the output and this is the carry. So this would be the same place as all of these. But this would be if this plus this, this would be the next place in line. Like you were seeing in my full four bit adder. Um, so basically, yeah, if I add two of them together, then it's gonna be the next place in line. And it would be go to the next full adder until you run out of full adders and then you just like do a carry technically you don't run out of full adders but just depending on the many and how many bits your computer is four bits is a good uh bit size for homebrew computers because like really i mean don't make a 64 bit <laughs> computer <laughs> side of um like logically or something that you're wasting your time no, don't do it, please. Anyway, so yeah, four bits. Four bits, four bits, people. Um, so yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, so this is ignoring A and B, and then the output of this one bit is built... So basically, it's ignoring A and B, and then it's taking the output of that, and it's ignoring that output in C. So in essence, it's an XOR gate for A, B, and C. So if one of them's all, actually, that's a lie, that's a lie. Because if this is off, but this is on, then uh, it will still be on. So you had to separate them like this so that this could be off, so that this could be on for all three of them to be on because there's a certain truth table to this but basically like it's just like a logical operation that takes in three inputs and outputs two so if this is on one 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 two and then you can go for the entire truth table until you get the three which both of the outputs are on so basically that's the one bit switch and then the second switch here so basically it's saying okay so if either a or and b are on or a and carry are on or b and carry are on then flip the switch flip the switch so yeah so basically you're, we're accomplishing this through an and gate comparing a or b or a for a XOR B feeding through another AND gate and carry. So basically if A so the XOR gate is on now and carry. But if we turn this off it, but if we turn this on then the XOR gate is off. But this AND gate is now on. So this is on and this uh, and this XOR gate off is dependent upon this being on for the carry value so that's all three values so yeah that's a detailed um uh expression of this yeah guys please let me know how my explaining is doing because i mean if i if there's any way i can make myself more clear clarity is the name of the game here when you're teaching so yeah make sure uh or like just tell me if, I, if there's a way i can be more clear so um yeah all right so anyway that is uh it i hope you'll tune in for more videos i i'm sorry i haven't been a bit more regular about that i will definitely probably ramp up the videos in the next like um i don't know 
the next like the next week or so but then school will be starting and I won't have much of a chance to make any more videos so I'll upload a lot of videos before summer ends how about that so you have a lot of content for me okay alright so yeah peace out guys